Hey guys, welcome back to Chickadee Farm. Today, um, this is gonna be a quick one. I just wanted to give you an update on the apple cider or the hard apple cider that we made together. It's been quite a few weeks now, actually, um, and probably, well, definitely more than it actually needed, time it actually needed, but we were on a trip and yeah, so I'm just now getting to it. Anyway, I just carried it, I've been, it's been sitting in our uh, living room uh, doing its thing. So I just carried it over to the counter and I'm gonna let it settle a little bit. Um, some of this sediment on the bottom and this stuff on the top, which we'll talk a little bit about. Um, kind of, it, it's, it just needs to resettle again. So while that is happening, I am going to um, also prep to get my next batch of kombucha going. So let's get doing that. Okay, so in the meantime, I have here a bunch of, oh, and that's my water boiling. I have 10 bags of black tea, and I am just going to pour in about four cups of water into this little guy here. Um, the reason I'm just doing a small, like really strong batch of tea uh, is that you can't put hot liquid in with the kombucha mother. So you want it to be cold. And if you make the whole two gallons worth of tea um, hot, then it takes forever to cool. But if you just have this hot, it cools much quicker and you can get to the actual, into the jug and everything much quicker. So that's why we're doing that. So yeah, like I said, just 10 tea bags and then we pour in the water and this is just going to set there for well actually i'll let it set until it comes to room temperature and then do the the next steps but i've already kind of have oh, bleh, i've already covered that in other videos so we won't do that again and i think probably my cider is good to go all right, so my cider, like I said, it is ready to go on to its next stage of fermentation. And if you were going to make this into actual hard cider, you would put it into bottles at this point. Since we're not doing that, I'm just going to put it into half, half gallon mason jars and uh, just cover the top with some cheesecloth and let them set. Probably is gonna take like six to eight, even maybe longer months for it to turn into vinegar, but eventually it will. And that's all you have to do. Basically just leave it open to the air, keep it in a coolish dry spot out of the sun. And that's all you have to do. However, I wanted to show you because this had never happened to me before. I don't know if you can see, but there is a white film on top of my cider. This, this stuff is normal, this gunk on the sides, but this white, film and these that bubble over there I was pretty sure it was it was bad it had gone bad um however I looked it up instead of just tossing it like I thought I was gonna have to do and apparently when you use a wild yeast which we did um this is what happens I've never used wild yeast yet which is why I've never seen it before um and it is called helicla helicla here, I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Helical, helical. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it's caused by the, the wild yeast, that's just what it does, apparently. Um, sometimes that is also what will impart the funky flavor um, if, the, uh, if, if you're bottling it for actual drinking. But since we're not, I'm not gonna worry about it. I am, however, I don't want that on the top, so I'm gonna try and strain it off with just a, strainer guy. Probably should have taken that out first. All right, I did sanitize this and you also don't want to use metal. So wood or plastic or silicone, those are all good. I actually don't know if this will come off. Oh, it smells like cider though. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to not use that little top bit. That's fine. Okay. 
this is the easy part, surprisingly. Um, you can't quite see it, but this little guy here is just a spigot and it is sitting directly above, you see this is the sediment. So it's sitting just above it. So none of, I shouldn't get any of that sediment in my jars, which we don't want. So that's perfect. And I don't know if you remember, but when we first jarred it, I'll see if I can put a, a picture up of it. Like there was a big band of sediment on top and a big band of sediment on the bottom. And when I poured it in here, after it did its um, primary ferment, the sediment was probably up to here. So that's how much it's settled in, I guess it's been probably a month and a half or so. So that's pretty impressive. And that means that all of the juice now is on top and all of the stuff that you don't want is on the bottom. So it's perfect. All right, let's get this in to jars. I know I have mentioned this as well. Um, you do definitely wanna have everything sanitized um, when you're doing this. So uh, these jars are clean, but they have not been sanitized. So I just use this stuff called Star Sand and it's really easy. Um, you just pour in, I can't remember exactly how much, I will figure that out. Um, pour it in a little bit and um, just swoosh it all the way around the entire um, whatever you're using and or you can use a spray bottle as well and then dump it out and don't rinse it just leave it like that and then it is sanitized so it's super easy i mean obviously you could boil it or put it in your sanitized cycle on your your machine your dishwasher but i don't want to wait for that so i'm not going to all right i'm going to figure out how much i need all right i'm just going to go with a quarter ounce this so it doesn't even it's like hardly anything and that will sanitize all of these jars because once i sanitize this first jar that i'm pouring it into then i will just use the same water pour it in the next one pour it in the next one pour it in the next one so super easy but very necessary I just remembered that I want to um, test the gravity of this, uh, which gives you the amount of alcohol that's in something. Um, I didn't sanitize this, so I won't put it back in, but just fill up this guy. And then we have this little thing here, which is weighted. And let me show you. All right, so never mind. Well, I'm still gonna take the gravity just because I'm curious. I did take it before I started, so let me let me back up here. To get the alcohol content of your whatever you're brewing, so this is used for cider, beer, wine, anything you're brewing. Um, you actually have to take the gravity before you start the fermentation, and I did, and I didn't write it down, and that's important. You need to write it down. Anyway, I'm going to see if I remember once I have this in here. Oh, so let me show you. So you've got this, this little guy right here, which is a hydrometer. And it's got all these lines on it and numbers. And water, I believe, is gravity of 1.0, like just distilled water. So 
then you just gently put it in here. It is made of glass and it's gonna float. Maybe I'm wrong about 1.0 being water. <laughs> well, no. Huh, this is saying that there's no alcohol content, but I can smell it. There's definitely alcohol content. Anyway, all right, so totally failed experiment because I did it wrong. So if you're brewing and you wanna know your alcohol content, you need to measure it first before you start the fermentation process, and then you need to measure it at the end. All right, moving on. We are going to continue filling up our jars. like I need to sanitize uh, at least one more jar. Gonna go do that now. Finished filling up the last one and we got three gallons. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, I actually, so after, so I had a gallon and a half when I juiced the apples. And so I let them set and do that first ferment by themselves. Um, I shook them, um, usually about twice a day, sometimes three times a day. Uh, and I left them there for about a week. And then because I only have these big five gallon carboys and it felt silly to put a gallon and a half of liquid in a five gallon thing, um, I went and got some just plain organic apple juice, which had been pasteurized. So there was no yeast of any kind in it. Um, and just added it to this so that I could have a larger amount. So I ended up with three gallons. I think I put in an additional, isn't that interesting? I put in an additional three gallons. Yeah. And even with the gallon and a half that was already, that I already had, I still only ended up with three gallons, but look at how much sediment is on the bottom. So that's a lot. And oh, the other cool thing, I'm not sure if you can tell, but all of that white stuff um, kind of just got left on the sides of the carboy as it was coming out. So it's perfect. All right. So um, yeah, now all I'm going to do is just uh, cover these with I think I am gonna go ahead and use, um, this is what I did with the first ferment. I'm just gonna use a normal um, two-piece lid and I just won't tighten it all the way. I'll just leave it on loosely because you do want it to still have um, some air that can get in, but you don't want other things to get in like dust and flies and that sort of stuff. And like I said, this can take six to nine months before it actually becomes vinegar. Oh, you know what though? I do wanna taste it. It's not, it's gonna taste disgusting. Well, not disgusting. It's not gonna taste very good right now because it's not fully um, fermented, but. But since I have this little bit here that I'm not going to use, I might as well taste it. Like I said, you definitely can smell the alcohol in it. Hmm. You can smell the alcohol, but you can't really taste it, which is interesting. Hmm. No, you can. Yeah, no, it's definitely there. Um, so, it's also going to continue just fermenting in these jars. And I mean, that's part of the process. That's basically, it becomes hard cider, then it becomes vinegar because it just continues and continues fermenting. Um, 
Yeah, so, oh, and one last thing. I actually found these, I have two of these bottles, and I found them, gosh, I found them like two years ago. Yeah, it was probably over two years. So, so this might take a little longer than I'm thinking. Um, and it was cider that I, hard cider that I had bottled in these guys. So it had been sealed, but this doesn't really seal them entirely, um, these kind of bottle caps. So air had gotten in and it had continued to ferment. And it, it honestly, it tasted like hard alcohol. It was, it was disgusting when I tasted it. And I knew it wasn't gonna be good, but, I, but it didn't smell like vinegar yet. So anyway, so I've now had this sitting on my counter. Um, actually, I put the top back on and just put it in a cupboard for a while. I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. And I was like, you know, I should see if it turns into vinegar. So it's been sitting on my counter since we moved here. So about a year and about two months ago, it actually started smelling like vinegar. So, I mean, it definitely smells like apple cider vinegar now. So it does work to just leave it out. If I had, there isn't a mother in here yet that I can see, maybe little bits of one on the top. No, yeah, there's no, there's no mother in this yet. If I did have one and I just poured a little bit of it into these jars of the fresh stuff, then it would go much quicker, but I don't have one. So anyway, that is it. That was my update for you guys on the cider project. And we'll let you know if you're still here in a year. <laughs> We ended up with three gallons of apple cider vinegar. All right. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Have a great day. Bye. Wait, I'm actually not done. So I looked at the other bottle of um, the vinegar that's been sitting there forever, and it actually did have a mother on it. So I just scooped a bunch of it out, and I'm going to just put a tiny bit in each of these, and it should speed up the process significantly. I hope anyway, that's the plan. I have no idea how much mother is needed to really make a difference. But I figure any little bit counts and helps. <laughs>